Hey everyone, it's 2020 and I have so many guests, amazing guests already for you on the podcast. The first one that we're going to start out with this week is Heather Cashman, who's a literary agent. So it's another awesome agent podcast for you. And she is with Storm Literary. You can follow her uh, on Twitter at Heather Cashman. So just her name, how you would think it would be spelled. (laughs) Um, I'm just too excited for you guys to get to know her and see her, hear her feedback and what she's looking for. So let's go ahead and get to know Heather Cashman. Heather, would you tell us a little bit about what drew you to publishing and being a literary agent? Um, Well, first I'd like to say thank you for hosting me. It was very nice of you and I, um, I always appreciate people who are trying to help in the publishing industry because it's tough. Yes. <laughs> um, so what drew me to publishing and being an agent was uh, I love writing. I love being a writer. I love the catharsis of writing mm-hmm. and the process of it. I think it's really fascinating. I think that it's um, the entire process of it is a very difficult one if you want to be published. And so what drew me to publishing in general was that I have always had favorite authors. I always loved reading and I loved the feeling I got when I read books. And I wanted other people to have that experience from my writing. And I felt like it was a shared experience that you can't really find outside of art. Yeah. You know, um, and so because of that, I tried to get published, queried, failed, Um, was rejected a lot and didn't really understand why. I just knew that I wasn't good enough. And so um, that was my journey, was trying to figure out how I could get myself published. And in the process, I ended up becoming an an editor and then worked in pitch wars for a few years and uh, started interning for agents, really loved what they did, really loved mentoring authors through pitch wars and helping people get published, uh, helping through the editorial process. So really what agenting is, it's, it's putting all of the things that I loved doing into one package and really championing authors, uh, who I believe in. So it really just fit me. And so that's how I became a literary agent. I love it. I love that you took your own experiences as a writer and, you know, seeing how hard it was to go through this industry, but now you can, you know, be there and be a support and a great partner for those authors that are your clients. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's the funnest part about it. Yes. Well, since we're all, you know, we're all book lovers usually in this industry, you would hope so, right? Um, Tell Mm -hmm. us a little bit about when your love for books began. When I was a kid, uh, my mom worked at an elementary school, and she's a single mom, so I was, you know, she would come get me and I would spend the afternoons uh, at the school with her. And my favorite place to go was the library mm-hmm. and the librarian and I were best friends oh, yeah. and I would just, you know, I was shelving books from the time I was like five years old. So I would go and sit in the library and she would, the librarian would show me all these wonderful books that she had just ordered or that came in or she would talk to me about books and, um, yeah, so that's really where my, my love for books began was in my elementary school library. I love it. I think the librarian was always my favorite person at my school. <laughs> she was the keeper of all the goodness. <laughs> yes. Well, I've got some questions about queries now, which I know everybody loves to hear, um, your guys's 
feedback on them and what you think. So could you tell us, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the specified formula, you know, like the the overall formula that your query should be. So do you think that queries need to stick to that formula? Now, this isn't your agency's submission guidelines because, of course, those should be followed, right, when a query is submitted. But this is in, you know, the basic who, what, why stakes author bio without being real gimmicky. What are your thoughts on that? So I actually do think that it should be pretty... I think you should really stick to it. And this is why I feel that way. We get so many queries and I know everyone knows that, but until you really start going through those queries and understand what it's like to be going through hundreds of queries over and over, um, it's what the standard query does. If you do it right, is it's going to, put that first paragraph with the information that's going to capture the agent's attention. Yeah. And for me, the perfect first paragraph is, you know, this is where I connected with you personally, like as an agent, not about your book. Um, you know, uh, I have tons of people query me that have connected with me through pitch wars or connected with me through just, interacting on Twitter or saw me at a conference or those kind of things. And I feel like when someone has gone, you know, who is obviously trying, that is going to capture my attention, especially when they noticed me as a person, uh, not just an avenue to get (laughs) published because so much of agenting is very personal and, the agent you choose, um, you should know who they are because it's a light, well, hopefully a lifelong, a, you know, relationship that's going to, um, that's going to matter to you. So I feel like that first paragraph really should be, you know, connecting with the agent as a person and then putting the title and the the genre and the age category of your book and the word count and, and really, obviously, if you've looked at the agent's manuscript wish list, you're querying them because they're asking for that. And so they're going to want it. And then that second paragraph should be, and I love when there are comparable titles in the first paragraph too, Okay. because what that does, sometimes if the comparable titles are good enough, I'll just jump straight to the pages because it's very intriguing. Yeah. Um, And so then, you know, the next thing is that second paragraph, connect me with the character right away. Um, You know, let me feel the conflict of the character, what they want, their motivations, what they need, um, and really bring that conflict home. And I think that when you do stick to that, uh, formula, even though it is very formulaic, in a way, it's it's somewhat comforting for me as I read. Like, I never feel confused. Yes, that's um, huge. And I think confusion is like confusion is the writer's enemy. Yes, it is. Uh, is that is pretty much the main enemy of a writer. So, I really do think that sticking to that specified formula does help avoid confusion and will probably help you get noticed, even though it is kind of, I mean, I think people might think it's boring, but I don't think it's boring. Yeah. I think when, I think people do think it is boring and they want to stand out. So they try things that are like gimmicky or, you know, a little bit out of the box. But I think when you see the ridiculous amount of queries, because I'm sure you just, I can't even imagine going through all of them, but you know, you want to, not feel confused. You want to not be like, what is happening in this few paragraphs that I'm getting? So I think, um, you know, sticking to that specified formula, although it can be a little bit, um, hard to, I think always fit in that box is probably real beneficial for you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, my next query question is what would be your number one query? No, no. 
So I have... <laughs> oh my goodness, there's so many of these things to choose from. I bet. <laughs> um, I think the one that I get the most that really frustrates me the most is when there isn't that like personal feeling to the query letter. A lot of times, well, not a lot, but I do get, you know, dear agent yeah. and, um, I do get queries that aren't for me. Yeah. Um, I, I guess anything that really wastes my time is frustrating. Like I don't take picture books. Um, I don't, you can't submit to me for adult. Like if you have a YA manuscript and you also have adult manuscripts, I can acquire a client on a YA manuscript, but I can't acquire a client on an adult manuscript, even though I can sell their adult manuscript after I've acquired on a YA. So, or a middle grade. So, I guess the frustrating thing for me is really just submit to the right agent. And even if you feel like you're running out of agents, it doesn't do anyone any good and really just kind of makes you have a bad name if you submit to an agent that doesn't take what you have. Because we have we keep track of who submits to us. I would imagine you would have to, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so when people um, when people are submitting to me, I can see the other things that they've submitted, mm. and so um, it, word gets around. Yeah, I would think so, and I think too, it, you know, you at the start of this business relationship want to feel like they didn't just like mass email you, you know, like pick your name off of some web search on the internet and be like, oh, okay, I'll query her. Like, it doesn't matter. Just, like, send out 50 queries. Like, you want to know that they want you for a particular reason, right, to work with them on their story. Exactly. And that's that's actually why I really appreciate people who like you who do podcasts because I feel like it gives us a way to be known Yeah. Up to the community, to the writing community. So, yeah, I think it's really important. I've had some people, after, you know, listening to an agent podcast – you know, realize they had something, um, that the agent wanted and query them and like use my podcast as like their connection. Like I heard about you on, I heard, listened to you mm-hmm. on the Rosequin podcast, which blew my mind a little bit. I was like, Oh boy, I never thought it would be that connection line in the query for somebody sending it to an agent. But I think you're right. I think hearing from you and, and getting to know you a little bit better in podcasts and, you know, the blog interviews that people do are super helpful and can help narrow things down for the authors out there who are querying. Yeah, I agree. So let's talk about queries and first pages. What things in a, in a query or first pages will make you stop reading that are like an automatic no-go for you? Well, I... I have some examples. I think there are a lot of things that obviously will make you stop reading. One is uh, when when I find the material offensive in any way, mm-hmm. like if it's if I find racism or um, and I I think there are ways to do it if it's going to be part of the character arc, but um, you know if the authorial voice is is has prejudices in it that really offend me, then yeah, I stopped reading. Um, Also, a lot of passive voice, bad grammar. Um, I feel like your first 10 pages should be just about perfect or as perfect as you can get them. And when they aren't, it makes me think that you're really not invested so it's it definitely turns me off. Um, in a query, I would say uh, just confusing. If it's yeah. really confusing, <laughs> I stop reading. If I'm, um, you know, and then also there's the cliches when someone's asleep and they wake up. Oh, boy. 
people hear it all the time. I'm sure that tons of agents say the yeah. same things, but yeah, um, you have to see them for a reason, know. though, because people still do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. And the the thing is that there's always the one who can break the rule and and use it. Yeah, it's just really rare, and I think. What I don't like about cliches is that I feel like this whole process is so, it needs to be creative. And there are a million different ways to do things or to have things happen. And I think they're just, people need to explore more and be more original. And if in their first in their first manuscript, they can't be original. How are they going to be original in their second and third and fourth and fifth manuscripts? Right. Which I'm also going to try and sell. <laughs> yes. So. Oh, wonderful. Those are good things to remember. And, you know, I think <clears throat> there's a, lo- a lot of emphasis put on the query, obviously. You want it to not be confusing and have all those things. But if your pages and your manuscript itself isn't going to wow an agent, like, that's where you should probably spend most of your time is making sure that the actual writing is good. (laughs) So we'll flip it and talk about your favorite thing to see in a query. What gets you really excited? Something I've never seen done before. Or a character who's very unique or who has a unique set of circumstances or abilities. I really like to see things that are high concept, uh, things that are kind of juxtaposed. I enjoy, I really get excited when I can tell from like the very first paragraph, just what the whole book is going to be about, what the conflict is, what the character is like. I love, uh, when the very first paragraph is voicey and I can just tell that who I'm reading is a unique person. Like it makes, you know, they come off the page as a real person rather than somebody who's, um, trying to sound like a real person. I don't know if that makes sense. (laughs) It does. I think voice is something that, you know, takes a while to be able to master and to get well. And I think, you know, the more you write the, you know, better, you get because like everything practice helps you get better but um good things to to remember for a query like you don't want it to just be um stagnant and boring you want it to still feel like it fits with your your story so if you have a really cool voice you know make the query match it yeah yeah so what would your tips or overall golden rules be for authors who are querying? Maybe they've been in the querying trenches like a super long time or are just getting started on the journey. I would say do everything you can to research and really find out who agents are. I would say always follow the rules yeah the, the, you know it's so frustrating when um we get people who don't follow the rules it's just and I don't understand why people don't follow the rules because in the end it only puts a negative feeling yeah. in the agent's mind yeah um which is an automatic no, because if you don't follow the rules, the agent knows you're not going to follow their rules when you become a client. Right. And so to me, it doesn't matter how good your writing is or how good you think your writing is. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't have time (laughs) to put up with someone who can't follow the rules. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've dealt with people like that before and it's just not worth it. No. And I think, you know, they could be not following the rules because I hope, you know, hopefully this, I like to say this, like hopefully it wouldn't be the case, but I'm sure there are people out there, but 
they think they're above the rules or they're trying to stand out and, you know, break the mold to, like, catch your attention, but that's clearly not going to be a positive for them, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's it's it doesn't make for a positive start. Yeah. You know, um, and I do understand, believe me, I really do understand how desperate you can feel. For sure. To get your manuscript seen. I get it. Uh, I've been there. You know, I was there to the point that it drove me to seek like a whole, I mean, I put out tons of years of my life just to try and figure out why, you know, why my manuscript wasn't getting picked up by yeah. somebody. And I know, like now I know, I, I totally understand. And the thing is that there are reasons and sometimes your writing is great. Sometimes your novel is amazing but it wouldn't sell. You know, hard, and that's hard, just the reality of publishing yeah. is it's a business and it's it's about the business side of it. And yeah. so, you know, I, I do understand the desperation, but I, it doesn't excuse the fact that there is a proper way of doing things. Yeah, and that can be a hard pill to swallow, um, the fact that it's business. You know, I think when you as a author get those like rejection form letter emails in your email as a response it can be like heartbreaking You're like oh no because you spend so much time and pour so much of yourself into your manuscript but as you query you have to really realize like it's not about it being the book of your heart and your feelings anymore you're sending it to somebody who has to sell it and think about that aspect of it which is totally different and that can be very hard to wrap your mind around I think yeah unfortunately but that's, it, it is really sad yeah and, and that's why I like you know doing these interviews too is that they can hear you know other writers can hear from agents and be like oh, okay they're they're real people they are not trying to hurt me they're not trying to like yeah. you know stab my stab my heart and make it bleed like it's unfortunately just about business when you think about it but it um, really is yeah I can promise you it is because there are there are definitely some books that I have I have had to uh, um, turn down the manuscript, even though I loved it. Yeah. Um, you know, and and that is really really hard too. From the other side of the fence, there are so many times when, you know, I'm going through my queries and I, oh, I'll, I'll go through queries two or three or four times. I'll come back to them because. I really, really like them personally. Right. But I go and do research and I like I'm trying to find where could I sell this? Like would anyone take this? No. And and so I have to say no. Right. And and it breaks my heart too from the other side, you know. But that but that is the business side of it. Yeah, and I can't imagine having to do that as an Asian. I you know, like being like, Oh, I love this book for me, but still you have to say no that would be so yeah. hard so hard yeah it is really hard mm. well would you have any different tips for previously self-published authors so this would of course be with the expectation that they're querying you with something new not something that's already been previously self-published but you know do you want them to um mention it in their author bio and be upfront about it right away um, I think it's good to be upfront about it. I don't think you have to say it. Um, the thing is that while those books can't be, well, in very, some very rare cases when they've sold incredibly well, they right. could get picked up, but that's pretty much never very, the case. Very rare. <laughs> um, I would say... Well, it used to be a stigma for sure. I don't think it is anymore. And I think so long as you, you know, at the very least, if the agent calls uh, to, you know, to make an offer, you should at least mention it. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to hurt you. And I don't think it's something to be ashamed of for sure. I don't think it's something you should hide or feel like you need to hide. Um. You know, so long as you're not querying that manuscript that's been published, 
all it says to me is, oh, they've written at least a couple more novels, which means they're probably, at least they have a few novels under their belt, you know, or, or whatever. I, I think that that can be seen as a positive thing. At least I do. So, um, that's good to know though. That's good for self-published authors, you know, to hear, because I think they're, used to be a stigma about it and I think some people might still feel that there is so I like asking that question just because I think um sometimes it's not talked about as much and so I like you know being able to get some feedback on what the best method is for them to do yeah and I think it it probably does vary uh, across the industry as far as agents go, like everything right. seems to vary <laughs> with agents across the industry, which can be frustrating for authors too, I know. But I do, there there definitely is a stigma is going away. And there are also agents who, like I said, if the novel has sold very well, will pick up those self-published titles. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, lovely. Thank you for giving us those tips and golden rules. Um, what else are you looking for in an author? So you've read their manuscript, you are on that phone call with them, and what are you really looking for in this, um, you know, potential client and business partner? So, really, it is a partnership. So I am looking for somebody who is willing to work really hard because you're going to. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, I'm very editorial, and all of my clients have gone through significant revisions before I send the manuscript to editors. Um, So working hard is a huge, you know, just being willing Um, to work hard and showing that willingness. Um, The second thing is being able to communicate well. The way that you communicate, if you communicate clearly, even if you can't sometimes communicate clearly, if you're willing to stick it out and keep communicating until we figure it out, that's a big thing for me. I'm you know, I don't expect my clients to be perfect in any way. Um, but I definitely, definitely expect them to be willing to keep trying. And I'd say the third major thing I'm looking for is someone who is willing to, you know, be that creative partner with me in the sense that they're willing to kind of not that they have to change their mind on everything. Like I feel like they need to know their writing and why they're writing what they're writing well enough Yeah, that they can go through edits and be able to change what needs changing or at least justify why um, they don't want to change it. So I feel like there needs to be, you know, flexibility, there needs to be, um, an understanding in general. Um, so yeah, I think those are the main things that I'm looking for. Just someone who will really partner in that creative endeavor so that we can get it to somebody who will hopefully buy it. Right. And I think you, you make a good point. You want someone who will be open to revisions and um, hearing what you have to say, but not like, just be like a doormat and be like, oh, okay, I'll change it, change it, change it. You want them to, to still, you know, have passion and be able to be like, wait, hold up. Like, no, this is really what I think it should be, but have a conversation and not like throw their fists down. So yeah, exactly. be, be a partner and a good one who communicates well and not like, is a not nice person to be with, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Heather, tell us a little bit about what you want to see in your query inbox and what's on your manuscript wish list right now. (laughs) Oh, so I would say 
you know, it's kind of the same thing I've been saying. I would love, I take middle grade and young adult, pretty much anything. Um, I love graphic novels. Don't see a bunch of that. I almost never see nonfiction, which is kind of sad. Hmm. Um, the other thing is, and now that I say that, I'm going to get a whole bunch of nonfiction. You are. But... <laughs> you are. <laughs> what I really want is like a variety, I guess. Just whatever you write, whatever it is, um, you know, just bring out that unique voice and unique quality and make it someplace I've never been. Even if it's, you know, downtown New York or my backyard, um, I love the unique perspectives that different people bring to a story. And that's generally what really catches me Yeah, is someone who, you know, has a unique perspective who really needs something and wants something and what is stopping them from getting it. And I think if you can give me that in the beginning paragraph, I will keep reading. Cool. That so. is, yeah, I hope you enjoy all the nonfiction that you get in your premium <laughs> box after this. <laughs> but wow. it's, they, people will, I'm sure it will be wonderful. Um, so my last question for you, I've been told, is the hardest question to answer. So um, I want to know what your favorite book is right now. This is not your favorite book of all time by any means. Just a book you read recently or six months ago, whatever, that you, um, that's really stuck with you that you really enjoyed. Um, oh my goodness. I know my it's really hard book right now that I've read recently. We read so many books. <laughs> well, yeah, I think right at this very moment, the one that I'm loving is One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. So good. Uh, I worked with her in Pitch Wars, and she is just such a lovely person as well. Um, but her writing is very compelling, and I haven't read the her second novel yet, but is that one, I definitely two can keep, have it on my shelf. Two Can Keep a Secret? Yes. The one? I have it too. I haven't read it yet either, but I loved One of Us is Lying. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, I'm glad you were able to pick that up out so quickly. I love it. That's always a hard one. People are like, I can't figure it out. <laughs> um, it's a hard question. It is a hard question. Heather, thank you so much for chatting with me today and sharing a little bit about you and your query knowledge. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. I so appreciate it. I hope you guys really enjoyed that interview and got something from it. Those literary agents who take the time to be on the podcast amaze me, and I'm so glad that they are sharing their knowledge and opinions with us. At the end of this week, I will have another awesome literary agent interview for you, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for listening.